Hi, I'm Russ Mayfield, investment strategist at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, we are lucky enough to be joined by partner and chief economist Don Rissmiller. Don, how are you doing this morning? Very good, Russ. Good to talk with you. Yeah, good to talk to you as well. Um, I want to start with maybe a simple question, but a couple of weeks out from an election with interest rates and inflation in flux, how do you assess the state of the economy today? So there are timely indicators we look at regularly, things like jobless claims, things like credit spreads, and we'll continue to, to watch those. But I do think we have to acknowledge, if we look at some of the anecdotal evidence, that firms are being very careful here and consumers are being quite careful here. So it would not be shocking to see firms take a pause when they're thinking about, say, big CapEx plans or big commitments until they at least know what the rules are. That's a very common phenomenon. If we look at the Fed Beige Book, if we look at the Dallas Fed Survey, if we look at some of the small business surveys like the National Federation of Independent Business, the NFIB data, what we see across the board in this period of uncertainty is a willingness of companies to take a step back and hold back on big decisions until they know what the rules are going to be going forward and then we could get an unleashing of activity. But until then, we're going to stay in this pause, most likely. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. It feels very um, not bad, not necessarily great either, but but a little bit frozen right now. I think one of the the interesting kind of dichotomies of this market and this economy is that ever since the Fed cut interest rates, You've had long rates and then the, the rates that are benchmarked to that, like mortgage rates along with it, move higher. So, you know, at kind of a high level, uh, you know, at putting it in as simple terms as you can, what, what's happening there with long rates moving higher, even as the Fed is cutting and indicating that they'll continue to cut maybe at a slower pace, but, but continue to cut well into 2025? Yeah, it's a very interesting phenomenon, but it's not wholly unexpected. In other words, there was a move in the market ahead of what the Fed did that priced in that action. And now that the Fed has acted and issued their guidance, the, the market is starting to stabilize. I would feel much better where we are versus the alternative. If we had a 10-year rate at 3% right now, I think that would be a signal that something's wrong, that the Fed is behind the curve. I think with the aggressive move that the Fed took, they're not behind the curve. And so we see some stability in long rates. Now that's less stimulative if we think about the pass through the mortgages, but we don't really want stimulus in the economy right now. We want the economy to function normally. We're trying to get Fed funds back to a neutral setting, not a stimulative setting. So that doesn't bother me a, a whole lot. Uh, but I do think the Fed has to follow through and get to neutral over the next several quarters. And I think they will. Yeah, it's a very uh, narrow landing strip, to be sure, for the Fed to kind of land the plane. And I think, as you mentioned, they've done a, a great job, but it's it, there, there's risks on both sides. Um, I want to shift and, and end. You know, we've talked a lot about the U.S. economy, um, what's going on here. I think one of the other big stories over the last three months or so has been China and the potential for kind of an economic rebound there built on the back of a very stimulative economy. I guess two questions. Does that feel sustainable to you? And what do you expect from the Chinese economy as it pertains to global growth, say, over the next year or two? Yeah, it's an important question because China has been a significant factor, especially over the last decade. There's been a good amount of stimulus pumped into financial markets in China. The stimulus for the real economy, though, is still lacking. So China probably isn't done. We haven't seen all of the stimulus that they're going to do. There's probably more on the way. If you put 10 analysts in a room and said, fix China, I think just about everybody would say the way to do that is to stimulate the local consumer. It's not CapEx, it's not exports, it, it, it's the local consumer. Uh, and there's been an unwillingness to do that, at least in size. Maybe what we're seeing now is some change of opinion. And this has to come from the top of the party leadership there, where there could be some stimulus applied in that direction. I think that would go a long way 
to helping the Chinese economy. What we have now is, is a big stimulus into financial markets, and maybe that's the leading edge of something that'll get to the economy. But we have to see more to make that call conclusively. Yeah, and obviously one of the biggest economies in the world, a lot of linkages to U.S. companies, even as we've kind of separated over the last several years. So something to watch for sure. Don, we appreciate the time as always, and we'll hope to get to talk to you again soon. Good to talk with you.